Hi everybody, we're here at the Leech Teaching Gardens and we're going to talk succulents here in just a little bit. So if you will type in the comments, let us know where you're watching from. And also I have a heart for Master Gardener, so please let us know if you're a Master Gardener. And we're going to just give it a few minutes before we get started so we can allow everyone who wants to join us have a chance to jump on. And we're going to just talk succulents. We're going to hopefully have fun and learn a few things, uh, something that's a little bit different maybe that you you're uh, not familiar with. I also want to give a huge shout out to our Aggie Horticulture Group. Um, they're horticulturists from Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service. We have several in the background waiting to answer any questions that you have, and so I want to say a huge thank you to those. Please remember that you always are welcome to go to aggie-horticulture.tamu.edu for all of our resources. You can find local um, experts in your area, so if you're interested in something specific and need to contact someone, you are welcome to visit that website. And always Always remember, we meet here on Wednesdays and Fridays at 1 o'clock for these Facebook Live events. And so we love having you here. We hope this is as much fun for you as it is for us. So we'll probably give it about one more minute and we can... Oh, we've got Fort Bend Master Gardeners on. All oh, right. Friendswood. Um, quite a few of our Extension employees are on to answer questions. Concho Valley Master Gardeners. Grimes County Master Gardeners. Lots of folks. Oh, I love it. I love hearing from those master gardeners. Um, I'm uh, Jayla Fry. I am the Texas Master Gardener Coordinator, and um, I am so happy to be here. Today, we're going to again talk about succulents, and I believe we're about ready to get going. So, first of all, let's just start with a definition of succulents. Succulents are any plant that stores water in its roots, stems, or leaves. And I often get asked, are cactus succulents or what's kind of the deal with that and actually all cactus are succulents however not all succulents are cactus obviously so let's talk about some of the common uh, succulent plants of course over here we have our cactus which are succulents we we have that down now and i want to turn your attention all the way over to this very very large aloe vera this is another very popular succulent plant and of course lisa whittlesey provided this this is a happy aloe vera and this is how big some of these plants can get of course i have some examples over here at the table of some smaller aloe veras but just to back up, these here are Echeveria. Then we have our uh, Portulacaria, which this is also called elephant bush. And so that's kind of an interesting plant, got a little bit of upright, it can spill. Um, and some of them will have little pink stems. And so that's kind of interesting. This one's not super pink, but they can have that characteristic. A little bit of pink here on the leaf as well. And then I'm gonna jump past the aloe vera. And here we have a couple of sedums. Uh, sedums are a wide variety of succulents. There's many to them, lots of interesting characteristics, um, as you can see here. And then we have in this little section here, the Graptivaria. Um, these are just really pretty plants, lots of color variation. In the next group, these are our Crassulas. And as you can see, they come in so many different shapes. This here is our typical jade plant. Um, these grow in lots of areas and they're very easy to take care of. These here are called E.T.'s Fingers, and I think that's just a fun name for those. But again, those uh, are all the Crassulas, but then you can look at some of these that are very, very different. Um, and they just have really interesting characteristics. On down here, we have our Haworthias. Um, again, they're kind of upright plants. They're really neat and have that tall um, form to them. And so those are neat um, little succulents to try. This is a Calancho or Calanchoe. This particular type is called uh, a chocolate soldier. Some of them are called, um, uh, what are they, panda plants. And I love those names because these are a little fuzzy. But if you look over here, this is a mother of thousands, and it is also a, a Calancho or Calanchoe. And so again, another uh, genus that has many, many different looks and shapes and varieties. I don't and know if y'all can see those mother of thousands. That's why it gets its name. <laughs> all of these, all along the edge of the leaf, and they'll drop off, and I'll have lots of baby plants just pop up. 
uh, here in the soil in the next few weeks. And so that's, I, I think it's a fun plant. Uh, these are ones that you share and sometimes people don't really want them because you're gonna have lots and lots and lots of more of them. And so that, I think it's a fun plant. But let's talk about how to care for succulents. So water and light tend to be the two uh, greatest challenges with succulents. So let's start with our light. So succulents can grow anywhere from indoors in low light situations all the way to outside in high light situations. Now, the best thing to do, especially when you have this many varieties of plants and different genuses, go and do a little bit of research. I always like to suggest reading up on the actual plants that you buy. And you can definitely get information that way, but if you're not real sure, maybe someone gave you a plant and you don't quite know what it is or the requirements for it, one thing that you can start to do is by putting it in a west or south facing window, something that gets pretty good direct sunlight. And then you need to watch your plant. If you watch and you're seeing that it's happy, then that's about the light exposure that it needs. If you start to see some spots on the leaves, then more than likely that's a little too much light and you'll want to move it to a little bit shadier area. On the flip side, if you see your plant starting to stretch to the sun, then it needs a little more light. And so you can adjust your situations uh, in that situation. Okay, the next thing is water. So I, <laughs> I am not an expert with succulents. I have killed succulents from overwatering them. I have killed succulents from underwatering them. And that sometimes can be the greatest challenge. But here's, here's what you need to know about succulents and watering them. Because they have water in their tissue, they don't like to have wet feet is what we like to call it, which simply means they don't want their roots sopping wet for long extended periods of time. So when you water, and because we're indoors here, I'm not actually gonna water, you'll water until the water runs all the way through the bottom of the pot, okay? And then the next time that you water, you're going to want to fill the plant. And so not just the surface, you're gonna to wanna to fill down into the soil, almost all the way up to the first knuckle of your finger. This is your best uh, way to determine your finger, right there is the best way to determine when your succulents, and a lot of plants for that matter, need water. Now, succulents want to dry out between waterings, but they don't want extended dry periods. And so, once you get into the habit of what your plant needs, then you're gonna have a better feel for that. But as you, if you're starting out with succulents, then definitely get in there and feel of that uh, soil and determine what it needs. Um, <clears throat> A few other things is um, when we pot plants, we want to make sure that that soil drains really, really well. So in this case, we have a, a soil that is specific for um, cactus, <clears throat> and this is specifically because it drains well. Now, I'll tell you that I have had a hard time finding cactus. Um, uh, mix and it's because they're selling out. People are trying cactus and succulents and um, my friend over at one of the box stores said that they've gotten two shipments in recently and it has just flown off the shelf. And so I ordered this in, but you can make your own succulent mix and that is three equal parts of peat moss, perlite, and coarse sand. And so that's a good way to have potting mix and still maintain that drainage. Again, that drainage is so critical. All right, now let's talk about containers. Containers, there are so many interesting and fun containers that you can use. I will always um, recommend having a container that has good drainage. Um, this is always gonna be your best bet, especially with our, our succulents not wanting wet feet. However, sometimes you find that perfect container that does not have drainage. <clears throat> so this one here, does not. So what I have done is I have left this little succulent in the pot. Let's see here if I can pull this out. But I've left it in the pot so that um, I can water it and then we can put it back in. So I'll just pull this out, water it, and then we'll snap that back into place. We'll have to do a little bit of uh, repair on the, the moss that is dropping out here. But that is going to make a happier, healthier plant. And that's really what we're trying to accomplish here. So you can technically grow things that don't have drainage holes in them, but you can put some rocks down in the bottom, but you're going to need enough uh, soil for the root zone. 
and then you're going to be uh, very careful on how you water. I've even seen people in that situation water with syringes and you're just going to have to monitor that very, very, very carefully if you're growing something without drainage holes. But again, I recommend uh, having those pots that have the drainage. So now we're going to talk a little bit about arranging succulents and so I potted this up this is actually for my daughter uh, I potted this up last night and oh my goodness the range of shapes and colors are just so much fun and that's definitely a reason to try succulents so here in this pot I have gone with something that is more upright in the back that's kind of a design element that um, has a little height in the back uh, I use this elephant bush here to do a little bit of spillage and again this little pink stem will echo the pink in this focal point in this uh, sempervivum that I have here and so these are three different plants and this is kind of a design element we can always go back and cover the soil with some rocks or moss or something interesting to make a really beautiful um, succulent pot here now a so I know there were a couple of questions if you could repeat the three parts yes again happy for the to potting soil. so for for your own mix you can make uh, that with peat moss coarse sand and perlite and it's a one to one to one ratio and so and just what is perlite perlite that is a, a something that is going to help with the drainage and so you can research um, you can go to google amazon or whatever and you can order it online and sometimes i have found it in uh, some of the box stores or nurseries and so it is an additive to the soil that will help with that drainage so um, do we have any other questions at this point uh, no that's good. okay very good so so again, back to the pots, when, you, when you're grouping pots together, you really want to group them with like requirements. And so if you have something that is more prone to a high light and something that's in low light, you could try it for a while. And if one is not surviving or doing well, you can always pop that one out. So it's kind of fun to play with some of these and just do a mixture of different things. So um, again, I encourage you to try all of these. These are just fun. I had originally, put this Sansevieria, which is also a succulent, in with this Mother of Thousands, and I had something else in here, and it just didn't make it, and I figured once these pop off and, and start to grow, then we'll do something different in that pot. So there's an example of how things can, can do differently, having different requirements, and you just really have to play with them, and that's, again, I encourage you to just play and try this out. Um, I do want to talk to you now about propagating. So what we're going to do here is um, I'm going to show you a couple little things that we've done to make more of these plants. So <clears throat> propagating succulents is actually fairly easy, but it's going to take a little bit of time. So what you do to start off with is you have your nice little plant here, and I'm going to pop this leaf off, and I'm just going to kind of twist just a little bit back and forth, and then I'm going to pop it off like this right there. And then I'm going to allow this to dry for two to three days, maybe even up to a week, kind of depending on the size. And so I'm just going to put it to the side. Now, Lisa, I'm not sure that you're going to be able to see how these have calloused over. And that's what we're trying to do. So those plant cells that have been damaged there need a little bit of dry time. They need to callous. But that will also induce rooting. And that's what we're trying to achieve when we propagate these through leaf cuttings. We can also do this through a stem cutting. So I could take the top of this stem here and just cut the top of it, but I'm gonna need to allow for a greater dry time on that. And then we pop them up. And so after we have allowed uh, the dry time, you can, uh, again, use your succulent mix. You can lay them flat down on the soil or you can stand them up either way. And then again, water is gonna be critical. So you want this to be in um, indirect light, plenty of sunlight, but then watering, I just missed mine. I, I try not to overwater. I don't want it to be too wet, but uh, about every day now, I go in and water. And now that reminds me of Do you something. Need a cover over it? Not necessarily. Again, you can you can put um, a Ziploc baggie over it to uh, increase the humidity, but uh, you can you don't have to do that. So either way is fine. Uh, but that reminds me of another thing about watering, is when you have little pots like these, even though we say succulents are pretty low low maintenance. 
sometimes you're going to need to water even up to once a week uh, in the hot summer if they're outside if they're in small pots those are some things that you're going to have to water more often you're going to have to remember to do that now if they're inside you may can go a little bit longer for these i've actually had them out on my back porch with east sun and i have needed to water them about every four to five days and so that's just something that i've had to watch for if they're inside um, you probably could stretch that a little bit longer, again, depending on the size of pot that you have. Now, this is summer, this is warm weather, but if you have them outside in the cool season, you may be able to get by to up to three, maybe four weeks. And it's about the same on the inside, just depending on, on your pot and your, uh, your setting, where they are located, you can stretch that a little bit further. But again, like I said, I have killed them both overwatering and underwatering, and so, finding that that works for you and always filling the soil and that will be your best indicator for uh, your your when to water now i think i only have about one more tip for you and that is anytime i'm working with um, with our cactus, I always use a really good pair of leather gloves. These are my well-loved worn gloves. Of course, the spines um, are something that are a little bit tricky, and I am not a fan of cactus for that reason. They're so beautiful, but uh, I am not a fan of those, those, uh, those spines, and so I don't tend to work with them as much. But I do love succulents. These have been something that has been very fun for me to learn about and work with. I encourage you to go out there and try them. They're a lot of fun. Uh, you can also uh, divide these out. So sometimes I get really excited when I pick up a plant. Let's, let's look at this. When I pick up one of these and I have several in one pot. And so you can just divide these out and have another whole little pot. And so I'll go pot this up and We'll just make more and more of these. And so, so that's. There's a lot of them that you can start that way. That's exactly right, through division. And so, this big old aloe vera here, we could, let me see here, Lisa. Let's see if we can't pull one of these out. I did a little, um, there's, yeah, there's let's right see there. here. And we can just pop them off. It's really kind of neat. You want to get um, as much of the root as possible. But you can see how we've got some root there. We'll pot this up and we'll have a whole nother pot of aloe vera that we can uh, put on our back porch or share. Uh, and these are always great plants to have around for their medicinal values. But um, love our aloe veras, love our succulents. Really, every Texan needs to have an aloe vera. Right? Amen. <laughs> I agree. Absolutely. Well, everyone, I hope you have enjoyed this time. If you have questions, I'm happy to answer those. And we also have those in, uh, online there that are there to answer any questions you have. Uh, remember to always check aggie-horticulture.tamu.edu for any more information and resources. And we just thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Lisa, any other questions? Um, several about life. Um, mm -hmm. Like our folks online have answered um, that as well. Um, any tips on maybe grouping of any of the succulents together? Some of your favorite maybe oh. designer tips. Oh, very good. So um, succulents really pair well together, and I will tell you, colors of succulents are all over the board. You can have anything from this pinky purple color all the way to an apricot color. And so you have so many varieties. And so when I was talking earlier, I said I like something tall, something with a focal point and something that spills. But you can also create that with a monochromatic uh, scheme and with the different colors of light greens and dark greens and blue greens and so you can group all of those together and then you can do some really really cool things with these different colors um, i would encourage you to go online there are lots of uh, places that offer succulents and will ship to you and so you could probably get some great growing tips there um, online but go out there and try and just uh, just look and dig and put things together um, I'm trying to think of some of them that I just really like to grow together and oh I play all the time I'm always wanting to do something different with these things and yeah, there's a question here about a Christmas cactus is that yes a succulent? it sure is 
Uh, those are fabulous. Uh, our Christmas cactus, sometimes they, we, we see them as Easter cactus. Uh, I believe it's Schlum Schlumbergia is the way you uh, say that, the scientific name. And uh, they grow just like the rest of our succulents. They, you can divide those by a leaf cutting, those little jointed segments. You can pop that off, you'll callus it, and then you can plant more of those. Uh, same thing with the water, you wanna fill for the water. Uh, the light is about the same. You can keep them indoors. They, they do well outdoors in a, a probably a morning sun situation. Um, but there's a little bit of a trick to get them to bloom, and that has to do with the light. And so uh, there, I'm trying to remember exactly when. I believe it's around October. You slow the water, and you start putting them in a sometimes a dark closet or covering them in some way. And that will help induce the bloom during the Christmas season. And of course, if you're trying to induce that bloom for Easter, you would have to adjust your times that way as well. And I know there's some good articles out there on Aggie horticulture that talk about inducing blooms for our Christmas cactus. Okay, well, thank you everyone for being here. Again, we, we're here every Wednesday and Friday at one o'clock and we just love you joining us. And if you have any questions, please visit our website.